This is Miranda Miller, and she is actually joining us from Minnesota. She's newly hired into UW Extension as part of our UW-Madison Division of Extension natural, Regional Natural Resource Educators. Um, and there's a connection here between what Miranda is presenting and what Jane just presented. Miranda is going to take a look at uh, some research that she was involved in, looking at uh, cigarette butt waste and kind of how those could be impacting our waters. So without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Miranda. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you, Eric. I'll just share my screen here. And I see your screen, so it seems to be working. Great. Okay. Yeah, so um, this is a project I did through the University of Nebraska just a couple of years ago. And I'm going to discuss today some of the environmental impacts of cigarette butt litter, uh, some of the behavioral factors that lead to cigarette butt littering, and then some of the implications for how we can reduce some of these behaviors. So just to kind of get you oriented, um, cigarette litter is, and cigarette butts themselves are one of the most frequently littered items in America. Um, and at my study site, which I'll show you a map of in a minute, uh, my data back this up. We had, uh, in three years, we found 14,000 cigarette butts, and that made up 36% of our total plastic and was the largest plastic component in our surveys. So you might be wondering why I called them plastic. Um, here's an image of a cigarette butt filter, and a lot of people, myself included, think these are made of cotton. And yes, some cigarettes do have um, cotton filters, but the majority of them are actually made of cellulose acetate, which is a type of plasticized fiber. So if you look in this photo, you can actually see a couple of those fibers kind of shimmering in the sunlight, and that's that plastic. So and a problem with that is that those filters don't fully break down. So they're going to lead to microplastics in the environment. Um, secondly, toxic chemicals leach into the environment from these cigarette butts. There's uh, more than 10 known uh, heavy metals that are in these. And when those leach into the environment, they also affect the living organisms. So there's been a number of studies done on um, freshwater fleas and other small organisms that have actually been killed from these chemicals, or they also um, can bioaccumulate into the food chain. So they move up and up as organisms consume those um, lower organisms. And lastly, um, animals can ingest these cigarette butts. So there's been a number of studies where sea turtles have been shown to have these in their gastrointestinal tracts, and um, shorebirds have also been known to consume these. So then we move on to human-related issues as well. Obviously, if these metals are getting into the environment, uh, humans can be exposed to those. And then we have nicotine poisoning that can happen from these. Uh, especially in kids. Kids like to pick things up, they like to put them in their mouths, and they can ingest those uh, cigarette butts directly. And then in places where recreation or tourism happens, for example, along lake shores, or in my study, we were at um, a beach, the cigarette butts can actually impact tourism and recreation rates. Uh, people go to these places for the scenery and they expect them to be clean and when that's not what they find they can have negative impacts on the number of people that show up there and that can actually lead to economical um, impacts as well. So here's our study location, uh, this little star down here. My site was on Jekyll Island, Georgia, right at the um, intersection there of Georgia and Florida more or less. And then the small inset in the right hand corner is the island itself. It's a seven mile long barrier island. And where you see each of those palm trees, that's a specific beach access point. So uh, Jekyll Island preserves its dune habitat and people can only enter the beach at those specific points where there's a boardwalk or a sort of path. So that's important because in my study, I started with installing receptacles. So if you look at this bottom photo here, You'll notice the beach uh, dune habitat in the background with those sea grasses. This is one of the areas where people could enter the, the beach. So they walk on a boardwalk and end up on the beach with uh, trash receptacles and uh, recycling receptacles. But when I first started this study, there actually weren't cigarette receptacles. So you see that black canister there. That's what we installed so that everyone could have access to a cigarette receptacle if they wanted to use it. 
And that's important because there's a lot of literature that shows um, people don't want to throw cigarette butts into trash cans. There's a, a big risk of fire. And that's a recognized reason that people don't use trash cans to discard their cigarettes. So for my study, um, I, well, after I installed those receptacles, I then spent the, the next uh, three months on the beach watching people smoke and then watching how they discarded their cigarette butt. So this was really important because I didn't want that self-reporting bias where people could just um, explain to me how they discarded. I actually wanted to observe that and then from that be able to draw some conclusions. So a proper discard was when someone uh, discarded their cigarette butt into a container something that they brought with them, which was often a pop can or um, back into their cooler that they had or some, some sort of thing that they had brought with them or even taking it over and put it in one of my, the receptacles I installed. In contrast, a um, improperly discarded cigarette butt was anything else really, which was when they ended up on the beach or people discarded them directly into the water or into the dune habitat, um, really anywhere that wasn't into a proper receptacle. So. After I saw how the person discarded that butt, I would go over and ask them to do a survey. Uh, the important thing here is that they still didn't know that I had seen them um, discard that cigarette butt. And I wanted to get their experience. I wanted to get their opinion of what that experience was. So I didn't want them to know. I just um, approached it with, I would like to talk to you about your smoking um, on the beach and how, what your experience is with that. After I did the questionnaire, then I did some follow up interviews with these folks so that they could explain in their own words what their experience was. So we ended up with um, 246 questionnaire um, answers. And for those follow up interviews, I did 28, which was the point of saturation, which um, in qualitative research is when you're not really hearing any new answers, you're starting to get a lot of repeats. Um, and I had 14 proper discarders and 14 improper discarders that I did those follow up interviews with. So from this research, I discovered that some of the predictors of folks disposal behavior was their environmental attitudes, their environmental awareness, and their habits. So talking about environmental attitudes, if people had more of a pro environmental attitude, then they were less likely to discard their butt, uh, cigarette butt onto the ground. Uh, similarly, if they were more aware of how that cigarette butt could impact the environment, they also were less likely to discard it onto the ground. And thirdly, their habits, if they just had a habit of always discarding properly, um, that really influenced if they were going to continue that uh, and discard properly. So then from those, uh, from the interviews, I got to compare the proper and improper discarders in their experience with smoking on the beach. So one of the important things was that in the proper discarder category, these folks really had a clear understanding that cigarette butts were um, litter. They expressed things like, I, I want to take my trash with me. Um, this is my responsibility. I'm the one that brought this here. They also recognize the cumulative effects of cigarette butts in the environment. So with that, they were able to describe some of those issues. Some of, some of these folks talked about, I don't want birds to eat these, or I know that there's chemicals and they're gonna accumulate in the ecosystem and that's going to be a problem. So they had very specific answers and were able to describe some of those problems to me. Uh, thirdly, they recognized that there were minimal obstacles to them actually discarding properly. So they would talk about things like, this is what I always do. I always have um, a container with me. I always have a cooler. I always have some way to discard this cigarette, but, and it's going to come with me. This is just what I do always. Lastly, they talked about how they were socially aware. So they were very aware that they, or they had an awareness of being in a group that was maybe not um, enjoyed by everyone. And that was just their personal experience that may or may not be true, but that was their perception of it. Uh, so for example, they noticed that some beachgoers disapproved of smokers um, and the smoke 
blowing on them or in some way impacting that person's beach experience. So these folks really wanted to make sure that their behavior did not affect others. So they talked about how they didn't want to leave that cigarette butt on the beach and they, they would actually remove themselves often and go smoke in a different area so that they weren't impacting other people's beach experience. Then comparing that to the folks that were um, discarding improperly, one of the most notable things here was that they were uncertain and they, this group disagreed on if cigarette butts were litter. Some folks talked about that they were and other folks discussed things like, you know, cigarette butts really aren't that big of a problem. They're, they're harmless. There's other bigger issues. It's, it's not a big deal. Um, Secondly, they lacked knowledge. So in contrast to the other group where they could describe some of those environmental impacts, this group <clears throat> really couldn't tell me specifics. And they couldn't talk about the components of cigarette butts. So they, they couldn't tell me the chemicals. They couldn't tell me any sort of um, that there was plastic in there or anything like that. They just gave very vague statements of, um, I know there's some problems, but they just probably are. <laughs> So it was very clear that they had a, they didn't have that understanding. Uh, thirdly, they talked about problems with the cigarette butt receptacles that I put out. They discussed how those black canisters were not convenient. They wanted those at um, locations spaced out across the beach so that they were easier to get to. They talked about those black canisters not being recognizable. So they wanted um, bright signage or bright colors and even maybe a different shaped receptacle, such as a tall standing one that you would see outside of a restaurant. Uh, they also talked about that discarding required a conscious choice. So that didn't necessarily mean that they were gonna throw it on, throw their cigarette butt on the ground every single time, but it just meant that they actually had to think about how they were going to discard versus the other group that felt like there was no obstacle to them discarding properly every time. And lastly, this improper group um, often expressed statements that contradicted what I had observed. So remember I had just watched them discard their cigarette butt onto the ground. And a lot of times people would tell me, um, I always throw it into a proper place or they, they would answer in a way that was um, socially desirable, which makes sense because if you felt like you were doing something that was um, not right, you probably wouldn't want another person to know. So I saw a lot of those answers also. So what does this mean? Um, first of all, cigarette butt littering is a behavioral thing. So that means that a multifaceted approach is necessary. There's not going to be a one size fits all because people have different attitudes. We have different beliefs. We come from different backgrounds and we're all going to approach issues differently. So. A few things that my research did shed light on is that we can um, we can increase awareness. So this sign here where the one with the blue writing in the middle, this is a sign that was used in California. And they're just trying to create some of that awareness around that cigarette butts are actually toxic materials. So like we saw with my improper discarders, there were a lot of people that didn't even recognize these as a type of litter because they think they break down, they think they're not an issue. So bringing some awareness to that issue. Um, also bringing some awareness to social norms of the area. So one of the things we were doing on Jekyll Island was actually having beach cleanups so that the social norm of um, this is a clean beach is reinforced when people visit that beach. If you have an area that's full of cigarette butts, then the, the message that people are going to see in that area is everyone else is throwing their cigarette butt on the ground, I might as well too. So we want to keep those areas clean and make sure we're reinforcing those um, social norms that uh, are going to have clean areas. Then minimizing barriers. So like I talked about, we need to have receptacles that are specific for cigarette, um, cigarette butt collection. People don't want to throw their cigarette butts in trash cans, even though um, that might seem like a good place. It's not. Um, you can start a fire. So making sure we have some of these recognizable receptacles. And my smoking population even suggested designated smoking areas, which kind of surprised me for a beach environment, but they talked about how that's actually something that they look for. And then when they see that, they also know that there's going to be receptacles or other um, infrastructure there for them to discard properly. And lastly, we can work to promote environmental attitudes. 
So this kind of goes along with social norms, showing people what's the, the norm in that area. Um, and we can also promote environmental attitudes by creating some cognitive dissonance. So when someone acts contrary to what they believe is right, and a lot of times we know that littering or throwing general things on the ground is um, not desirable, then that kind of creates some cognitive dissonance where we have to um, balance our behavior with our, our belief of if we're doing the right thing. And this kind of explains why some of those folks wanted to tell me a, a story when that's not really what they were doing. So, um, so those are a few things we can do to help reduce cigarette littering. Um, like I said, multifaceted approach is really important here. No one of these on its own is gonna be the perfect solution, um, but together they're going to help. And uh, these are my references. I'll just throw that up there real quick for the recording. <laughs> and then um, there's some image credits down there as well. But importantly, I would like to point you towards the publication and the report that I wrote from this uh, research, because especially in that report, I put more concrete examples of how to address these sorts of issues, and you might find that useful. So uh, go ahead and take a screenshot if you know how to do that or jot these down real quick, and you can feel free to reach out to me via email. Uh, I can send you these or go ahead and use those links and look them up because if you're looking for examples, uh, you're going to find some of them in there that I just don't have time to cover in this presentation. So thank you for um, attending today and I can take any questions that anybody has now. Yep, we do have a couple of questions for you um, and we'll leave this screen up so that if people do take time to um, type these in uh, to their to their browsers, they can get a copy of that report. Um, but thank you, Miranda, for sharing this. Uh, one quick question. Um, thinking about sort of the messaging that you're talking about, is it possible or have you ever seen an example of a cigarette carton or a cigarette package having information on it that reminds people to dispose of uh, cigarette butts properly? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that messaging myself, um, but I know Keep America Beautiful, which is the one that I referenced very first that has done that big cigarette study. They had used some different messaging um, and I believe they had some information on that. Uh, a, that would probably be a nice useful campaign, but I, I wonder about its, our ability to implement that because when I think of cigarette packaging, I think of going to the cigarette um, producer and I don't know how likely they would be to give up some of their carton real estate to an environmental message. Um, so what we kind of have targeted is uh, external uh, messaging. So on Jekyll Island, we are really lucky to have, it's a, it's a state park, so everyone has to go through an entrance gate. So one of the things we were uh, doing was putting messaging in the newsletter that every single person gets when they come onto the island. So. I, I could see the carton thing being useful, but I'm not sure about how implementing it would go. Sure. And then can you also just talk a bit about what year your study was done and how you selected the location? Yeah, um, this was completed in 20, well, the research was done in 2016. I wrote the thesis for this in 2017 and my most recent publication I just completed uh, this last summer. and. I selected the location because I actually worked at the Sea Turtle Hospital on Jekyll Island prior to starting my graduate work. And I knew there was a large um, data set that was available. We had, so the way that we collected this data, first of all, like the cigarette litter data, was that we had a volunteer program on Jekyll Island that would go out and use a marine debris tracking app. They would track what type of trash they were finding on the beach, pick it up, and then um, log all of that information. So that's how I knew that this was actually a problem on Jekyll too, was I already had that data set of, oh, there's all these cigarette butts, clearly something needs to be done. Super, thank you so much, uh, Miranda. And thank you to all of our speakers. We are at time here. And uh, so I invite all of you to continue to um, attend the rest of the sessions today and um, reach out to each of the presenters individually if you have additional questions for them. Thank you so much and happy Wisconsin Water Week. <laughs>